Mikowai, probably the most interesting topic for many of our clients at least. Um, so budgeting, uh, what sort of budget to take into consideration when planning new product development or just design work. So I thought maybe we should talk about it a little and talk about not just the design process and where the costs come from, how is it built, but also what sort of decision making can prevent from wasting a budget or going over budget perhaps. So, okay. Um, the the I don't know if it's the first thing, but uh, for sure it's one of the um, common uh, questions that come up when talking to clients is how do we budget our work in the sense of do we go with time and material or do we go with fixed price for the whole process? And I know the answer is, as always, it depends. <laughs> Um, but maybe you could clarify why and how it works. Okay, yes, uh, speaking of money is a really difficult topic. Uh, so I think that we won't go into, into uh, certain amounts of money, but I would like to cover the topic from the broad, more, more broad perspective, like how do we work, how many people do we need, to deliver how many um, weeks or, or how much time do we need to, to spend to make the work um, a value for the client. So uh, you were asking about the time and the material mm -hmm. as well as the fixed price. Um, and we do both and on different stages of our design process mm -hmm. we are used to uh, taking the fixed price at the beginning and then work at the time and material manner uh, because of the fact that at the beginning we do not know what the final result will be um, we all of course know that the product or the brief is really um, clarifying the work that we have to do but the result or the difficult difficulty of the result um, for the further steps of developing the product is not known yet so okay so then once after we got after the concept presentation we estimate the time that we need to deliver the final product and then this time is um, taken as time and material manner mm -hmm. because we have to be as transparent as possible with our clients as well to not waste too much money or too much time. Yeah, so sure. this is something that we are working both, but the first part of the design process is rather a fixed price and the second part is usually time and material. Okay. If I understand correctly, at the beginning of the process, um, it's a more predictable scope of work that uh, we're kind of uh, more sure that we won't go over a certain fixed amount of money or time or work hours. But after a certain stage, it's the, the sort of legwork, the, I don't know, uh, testing, prototyping, things that we, 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 we are unable to predict for a fixed uh, amount of time or money. Yes, it's difficult to, uh, to define the cost of developing the product as a physical part, as a physical product, mm. because uh, prototyping uh, costs money and we don't know at the beginning of the project, of course, we don't know mm, how many prototypes would we need to get the result that we want. So sometimes when it's an easy product uh, to make, like two pieces of uh, plastic enclosure uh, without any requirements for mm, 
waterproofness mm. uh, or water resistance. Um, any other requirements for mm, for good quality of uh, matching these uh, two objects together? So we can take some uh, tolerances, higher tolerances or bigger tolerances. Um, we just have two pieces to assemble. It's rather an easier task mm. and it should take less prototypes. One, even two prototypes will finish the job. Whereas if we are designing a complicated or sophisticated object that's uh, consisting of tens of uh, components. Each of them has to be prototyped, tested. So these, the amount of prototypes grows. Yeah, so, more, more complications, more so, unknowns. So of course, at the beginning of the project, we know if this project is easy or not. But still, the, re the final result is not yet um, visualized. Yeah. So. Because of the fact that we've got the tools uh, like uh, software, uh, CAD software, we are able to design the same piece of, um, of work, the same object as a really simple one mm -hmm. with simple surfaces that is fairly easy to represent in a CAD and then into the material world. But sometimes our clients need this object to be more um, stylized yeah. or, have, or this object has simply more complicated surfacing. So the surfacing thing or this, these mechanical things that are inside like, like ribs, um, lips, mm -hmm. or, or, or all the little things that make this, a, this concept a product, yeah take time. So um, if we take into consideration of this, all of these little facts, um, I think that we all understand that thinking of the project as just words in the brief, mm -hmm. we cannot tell how complicated this project will be at the end. Mm -hmm. So the level of complication at the beginning is rather a, you know, a container. Like it's, this is an, still theoretical. Yes, this we consider this project is an easy task, or medium, or rather hard to 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 design. That um, th these um, three groups that we that we tend to uh, we tend to group projects mm -hmm. into these three yeah. because. Once the client comes to us and he says that he wants, and from his perspective, um, a small product that is not going to be a family of products, um, when he has the electronics that are going to fit inside, or he has an idea on how this product should work, mm -hmm. it's rather an easy one. Okay. So we know how to um, plan this project, um, how to set the budget for this, especially for the conceptual phase, mm -hmm. um, so that this will be a part of an easy project for us. Okay, okay. Of course, every pro project might be uh, difficult, but I don't want us to understand that each project is difficult. Yeah, sure. Um, there are more easy ones and there are harder to make. Um, in the medium perspective or, or in the medium group of projects, there are projects that have um, some, for example, some mechanical mm, movements or kinematics involved, mm -hmm. uh, where we have to think not only of the form, but also of the function and maybe develop something new inside mm -hmm. mm, so that uh, not only the style but also the internals um, make the style okay. outside yeah. because we have to think from the inside to the outside. Mm -hmm. um, 
we don't know what's inside. So this is more difficult because we had to think of it. So that it takes a little bit longer and it, um, we have to spend a little bit more time on developing these ideas. And it probably involves more experts than the other projects you mentioned because there are more different uh, elements involved. Yes, it, it takes a little bit more um, of headcount. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I think maybe uh, we should go through our design process and maybe talk about each stage um, and what's the headcount in, in each of them. Maybe not necessarily what that stage is about, but why at this stage we need, for example, this amount of people for this amount of time to deliver that sort of um, effect, right? So for, for those who are interested about our design process, we have a separate video about it, so you can go and check it out on our uh, channel. So now we're not going to talk about s specifics of each stage, just the way we approach budgeting at each of these stages, because not every project is from is, is the full process, right? Some projects are just a one, two, three stages. You can jump in in every step. Yeah. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. Uh, maybe let's return to the, to the harder ones. Okay. So finish this, maybe let's finish these groups. Oh, you want to go through the... Okay. I wanted just to finish the, the harder one. Okay. Uh, just long story short, when we have to design more than, more than one concept for, for, for the client, it means more than one, um, one object. Because like we, a family of products. Like a family of products. It's usually the hardest thing because you have to take into consideration not the one product, mm. but three products or four. It depends on the client. So you take all these easy and medium steps into this third step, okay. which makes the most um, difficult work. Okay. Uh, yeah. So jumping into the design process and uh, all the details about, about the time and budgeting. Um, we can start with the pre-design, of course. Mm, and at this stage, we are, um, we are discovering what is the project about. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we've got the brief, but when we read the brief, uh, it's like a kind of language. We have to understand it and then translate it into a specification of the project so that both sides understand what is to be done. Yeah, and this is one of those parts that you mentioned are more on the um, fixed price sort of stage because the amount of work we need to do is more predictable. Um, yes, we, we take a little risk at this level because um, we need to extract as much information from from client from the ob from from the topic of the of the project to to be sure that we are going to design what client needs okay so uh, who runs this stage of the process and what's the work involved uh, this process is uh, uh, led by a team leader of or, or the senior designer, because he is most experienced person to ask questions. Okay. Mm, but of course, these questions are a synthesis of questions that we have as a team, because we work on the brief, we are setting a list of questions or writing the list of questions to, mm -hmm. to the client and then meet with the client and go through these questions so that we are able to um, to describe the project more uh, more technically yeah with better understanding of the client of of potential clients of or, or users of mm -hmm. this project because this pre-design phase is Mm, it can take from one week if it's an easy pro project up to, you know, even even uh, months. Yeah. Okay. If we want to discover all the little 
details of the project. But it's usually taking from one week up to four weeks to okay. discover. I think it's important to mention that um, no matter, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, no matter if a client comes in with a already um, detailed, somewhat detailed brief, or they come with a vague uh, brief of this, with very vague descriptions, we still, even if the brief is pretty specific uh, in its language and its detail, we still need to verify if these assumptions are correct. So uh, no matter if the brief is pretty vague or very detailed, we basically still need to go through the whole brief and verify if it's okay. Yes, because as I said, language is some kind of a communication uh, tool, yeah. but it's not as precise as uh, specs, as, as specs, and as uh, common understanding of each sentence. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you you know sometimes you you say one sentence and you think that it's totally understandable. Someone reads it and it's yeah, they, they it understand doesn't mean it anything to, mm. to, to, to 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 them. So we have to find this common common language uh, on. Uh, on the subject and we have to make sure that we understand each other what does particular sentence mean okay just like that so that's the pre-design phase yes the next one is conceptual design yes it's conceptual design and it's the most predictable <laughs> okay um, uh, thing because once we know what to design then we can start with the creative process and we usually um, make it in four up to six weeks. Okay. Uh, even if, even if the, the project is complicated, the hard one, uh, once you know all the details of the project, you simply need more people uh, and, uh, and more communication. So that's why it takes longer, maybe six weeks or seven, uh, so, so, so something like this. But mm, it's not as difficult to predict the time because it's a conceptual phase. It's mm -hmm. a phase that we are thinking of the brand, of the style, of, um, of, the, of proposed values. Uh, we are making conceptual models, so they are not as complicated as the final production models because we we make the skin we make the the, the outside yeah. of the of the product of course taking all the technical requirements and assumptions mm -hmm. into consideration so that it's not that uh, we are delivering beautiful imaginary imagery mm -hmm. or pictures that are not possible to turn into a, a chemical phase. Yeah. But of course, what, we, what we've learned is that it's super hard to translate the same model, the same 3D model that is a conceptual one into, into the physical one. So we have to jump into another phase that is mechanical phase, mm -hmm. but let's leave, leave it for now. Yeah. We are working on conceptual phase. Yeah, so for this conceptual phase, what's the team? Because uh, from what you're saying, it's not just about designing, it's also part engineering. Yes, the team is usually around four people. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less, but we are, we are not working in less, in, 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 in smaller groups than three. Okay. Um, because uh, we have worked or, or work in, in this project in such a manner that one designer should deliver at least one concept. Mm -hmm. um, because I, we believe that uh, we should take as much as we can from a team uh, instead of being a freelance design studio which has single or two designers. I believe that each, of course, I do not believe, I know that each of them has its, his own style. So it's good to show the client um, different styles of proposed designs instead of 
showing three different designs, mm -hmm. but in a similar style. Yeah, or three variations of basically yes. one. Yes, but it's of course, it, it sometimes happens because clients want to see similar projects which has which have you know already defined style mm -hmm. but um, on a different level of of detail or maybe different level of uh, finishing mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so he wants something yeah it different. depends on the project yes but usually uh, clients um, love to see three different approaches mm -hmm. uh, to solve to to solve the problem that we he yeah comes to us yeah yeah so we need at least three people and with more difficult projects we need mm -hmm. four or even five to six people. Okay, so um, after that phase we go to the uh, targeted conceptual uh, design which is uh, mm, sort of uh, taking into consideration feedback yeah, for the conceptual designs and as, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, fixing it or just going into the details? We call it refining, refining. the design uh, or making it better. Yeah. Um, it's because that um, we are not able to predict all the things on the conceptual phase um, or match 100% uh, the, you know, the style that our clients has in his mind, something like this. So the client uh, has the, the, the biggest stress before he sees the concepts, mm. because he usually, if, if he's the, our, mm, or he's using the uh, services or taking our services as, as for the first time, he doesn't know what to expect. And once he see, uh, he sees this presentation mm -hmm. with visuals, he can speak about them. Yeah. And once he, once he hopefully liked one uh, one of the concept, he can describe what um, what comes next. So that how to refine this single concept that he have chosen mm -hmm. into a concept that uh, should be. Um, worked uh, that we should work on further so how many people usually work on refining a specific uh, concept and how much time does it take the group is usually smaller because we've got uh, a smaller amount of work to do and it's usually the project leader um, who is not changing at this stage so the project leader comes at the beginning of the mm -hmm. project and goes with the client through first phase one three one two and three mm -hmm. mm, and the designer that has designed this specific concept that, okay. that we are going to to refine because it's easier for the designer that has already made uh, this particular concept that we are speaking about so that these changes are going to be made more efficiently yeah and it takes uh, usually two periods of time the second the, the first period is that we need to get the feedback mm -hmm. so it takes time or our clients time to look at these concepts to maybe gather feedback, to gather the feedback yeah. maybe from their potential customers maybe from target groups um, there are a lot of different stakeholders in the project so that they all all need to uh, to give feedback yeah so uh, uh, apart from that because i assume that sometimes it's a one-man army sort of making the decisions so the feedback might be uh, quite quick mm -hmm. but like you said when a larger organization needs to consult the the feedback between i don't know departments or just a couple heads plus do one two three surveys or focus groups or whatever this might probably even take months um, yes. but uh, for our team after we receive the feedback from the client what's the predicted timeline more or less the predicted timeline is around two to three weeks because it's as I said more easy task to mm, to make these changes but because of the fact that this feedback might come in a random time manner 
uh, we have to have time to plan okay. uh, yeah. the team to make these changes. So you, you're saying that after we get the feedback, <clears throat> we don't necessarily jump into refining the, the project. We need to plan for to have simply time to do it because we never know when we are going to get the feedback. Yes, Sim simple as that. Because we are not uh, working on a single project uh, yeah, each sure. time, so sure, sure. so um, we have to be sure that we have time. And the designer that was designing this this uh, this particular concept is also available. If not, uh, we are of course trying to to set the work for someone else. Mm -hmm. But if it of course takes. A little bit more time because he has to learn this concept um, yeah. more and what to change. Um, moving on, we would go to the uh, mechanical design part. Do, are we still within the uh, fixed uh, price scope of work? Uh, we try not to be, uh, be but but different thing, things happen because different clients need have different needs. For example, some, some client need uh, an estimation of hours and it's totally understandable that they need to um, have these price um, boundaries. What's the lowest possible price and what's the highest possible price? Um, and of course, we are able to estimate the time on on each project but it's only possible once we are finished with the conceptual phase mm -hmm. it's really um, i think unbelievably hard to imagine what the amount of work will be to do Without, before mm. this this third stage of our design process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we st we still have vague ideas on how this object or product might yeah, look. Yeah, that would be just pure guesswork. Yes. So if uh, if clients would like to expect the um, estimated timeline and the budget from us, we need to be at the at, at least at the end of the stage three to okay. be more precise. We can you know just take some numbers and put them into the uh, quotation. But I believe they are not uh, true. Yeah, yeah. In the end, well, well, of course, the client knows that we we tell that to each client that uh, yes. we, we need to go through the first three stages. If you want to hear a quote that makes sense, because without those three stages, this is just guessing, and it will definitely change. Definitely, yes. We inform the client that it's going to be. Uh, revised, the, the, the quotation is going to be revised after the phase mm -hmm, number mm -hmm. three. And then we jump into the uh, mechanical phase that is more uh, focused on delivering the working object, the working, okay. con the working prototype. The physical? The physical one. So, so we, we just um, make a list of tasks that are going or that are needed to be made mm -hmm. so that the final product will have all these described details from this list and we can estimate what task or which task takes how much time so that we can sum it up and then uh, tell the client um, the estimate yeah so that's why the time and material comes because we need some time and we sometimes need to buy something. Okay. To buy... Um, to build the prototypes. Things to build the prototype, maybe to, to, to make the prints, uh, to maybe to buy some materials that are... Uh, that have to be sourced, uh, tested, and with these... Uh, all these physical things and the time that we need to spend, um, we just cannot fix the price. Mm -hmm. We can just estimate. The so price. I assume you you w won't be able to tell me how much time it takes because, like you said, it it, it vary, varies uh, quite a lot. But tell me about maybe 
what size of a team might be working on this project. And for this medium difficulty uh, project that you've mentioned before, what more or less or the margin of the time uh, timeline could be? So we, we try to prototype fast so that we can fail fast and repair uh, mm. what is probably the problem. So we are not going to um, make this phase as long as possible so that we are totally sure that this concept will work because we have to test it. So that uh, it's a matter of weeks, sometimes months, but no more than three months. Okay. Uh, so that this first, first prototype that we are going to test should mm -hmm. be Mm, should be made within three months. For uh, this medium scale project? Yes, yes. So th three months, uh, this is the time frame. And uh, considering the team for the medium project, it depends uh, if the embedded electronics are inside or not. The team varies from two, three people up to six people if the electronics are inside. Mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. we have to have uh, embedded engineers, um, firmware uh, yeah. developers, and so on. Okay. But uh, this uh, this phase is or should take no more than three months. Okay. Uh, so after we uh, uh, have this stage sort of checked, so we have the final um, uh, prototype, the next stage is DFM. Uh, yes, but it, it's in an ideal world. Mm -hmm. uh, once we get the prototype uh, running f at the first time, yeah. it's usually not happening. Uh, so that we are doing some refinements, some tweaks in the mechanical design, because the, the mechanical phase it's it's not widely spoken about, but it's an iterative process, like all of the processes of bringing new products into the market mm -hmm. are a little bit more complicated than the linear fashion uh, design process. But if we, if we had to describe it in more understandable manner, we had to make it more waterfall. Okay. But this phase number four is iterative, but we tend to make chunks of a bigger part of, or, or smaller chunks of the bigger part of the project so that we test uh, on different prototypes mm -hmm. what are uh, what are the functionalities that we have to deliver what are the aesthetics that we want and these little prototypes and rounds of prototyping within these three months are already okay to uh, set a prototype uh, round number two or three so that we have total understanding of what's going to be manufactured in the future and then we can jump into the but DFM the phase. But different stages of prototyping from one to three to however many are needed, these are still within those three months or? Uh, these small prototypes are usually within these, um, these three months but what I was speaking about is that we have the final first assembled prototype of the project that is after this three months period. Okay, the first one. Yes, the first one that is complete. Because in between, we can uh, prototype a single mechanism, mm -hmm. we can prototype a single... Um, like s s specific parts or subsystems. Yes, so a, and sub-assembly or something. So that we are already iterating. So mm -hmm. we are already um, trying uh, different approaches and finding the right one. Okay, so the but act, so usually the first complete full prototype probably still needs some additional tweaking yes, to because, make another one. Or, because or once you one. assemble the whole part, you also learn something new. Mm. And with this, when you learn something new, you assemble it once again. And sometimes you need to make the third prototype. So what is this, an additional month too? Three? Um, no, it's, it doesn't take uh, three months, but it's usually about uh, two months. It's usually because of, uh, of the fact that we have to source uh, all the components. Mm. 
it doesn't take so much time to to redesign these small things, but it takes time to make an order uh, within different vendors and then gather all these pieces together once again and then assemble them together. Yeah, but I, that, that's also important that the time uh, on developing uh, or working on the prototypes, it's still a lot of logistics in it, like finding the right vendors, finding the right components, especially with electronics, um, buying them, waiting for the delivery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then it's sort of like with the feedback we were talking about. Uh, maybe the process of doing a task doesn't take as much time, but waiting for to have everything you need to perform the task, sometimes that's, uh, that's the most time-consuming part. Yes, that's true, that's true. Um, we can jump over it uh, with finding uh, more um, or, or faster vendors, but it usually takes more money or um, or simply makes it more difficult to find the right one for the, for the right time. Okay. okay. Uh, mm, usually the time is, uh, is a remedy. <laughs> uh, we have to be patient uh, because not all the things are possible within mm, shorter time. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So uh mechanical uh, uh the mechanical part takes four to five or maybe six months in some extreme cases mm -hmm. um, yes. and then we move to uh design for manufacturing so tweaking the final prototype to fit into the production let's say process or or system yes it's a very wide, of course, uh, term like design for manufacturing, but we tend to, de to define it as something like this so that we have the prototype already made. It is working the, f the way we like. It is looking the way we want. Mm -hmm. And now we've got a vendor that is interested in manufacturing and assembling this piece of um, physical mm -hmm. um, device so that we have to um, find a common understanding on what is possible within his technologies or m m maybe many vendors because it's also possible to have many vendors for yeah, your sure. product uh, so that we have to understand each other needs and each other possibilities so mm -hmm. that they can do something without many changes but sometimes uh, they they say that you know this little part is invisible in the whole assembly it's an internal part maybe let's make it cheaper more efficiently mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i have suggestions on how to do it and then we of course tweak it because we cannot predict all the th all the costs of um, of the physical sure. manufacturing um, of, of manufacturing each part because these people from manufacturing are actually the experts yeah of course so h how many people on our side take part in this process and is it even possible to say how much time this might take w within the still the medium difficulty project um, it takes, um, sometimes it takes weeks, like two or three weeks, because the project is simple, mm -hmm. the vendor is already um, within our network of contacts, we know each other, we know that they have these possibilities, so that we design for these possibilities, and the process is easy, mm, so that we after the mechanical phase, we mm -hmm. already have 99% of the FM made. Okay. But it's not super common. The, mo the most common uh, perspective is that uh, we have to check all the parts in the assembly of, of the design that we, that, we, that we have done. 
and make a little tweak in each of them. Little, mm -hmm. sometimes more aggressive, sometimes less, but on the average, uh, these changes are are made on each part mm -hmm. uh, so that the manufacturing is more efficient. Mm, so this process uh, might take up to three months, something like this, but there are other factors that make this stage longer or shorter. Okay. The most important is that the client is uh, or, or signs the agreement with the vendor without any issues because sometimes it's on the legal side mm. because you have to spend quite a bit of money uh, to make the tooling um, and once you need to spend this money you have to be sure that the quality that you get is within your so, uh, standards. Yeah, so again sort of um, the time the specific stage takes can be mostly stretched because of uh, processes that are outside even of our scope uh, yes, or it's they're independent from what we do. Usually because of the communication. You have to communicate between design studio, the vendor and the client. Mm. And this loop takes time. Mm -hmm. um, changes are usually minor, not major things that we have to rebuild all the assembly because it is not manufacturable. It's it has never happened mm -hmm. in our studio, but we have to tweak the design so that uh, the communication between vendors, clients, lawyers, mm. um, investors, and all these stakeholders that, I got, that are going to finally uh, be a part of success of the product, uh, it still takes time because mm -hmm. we are people we have to. We have our own different op projects, objectives, and we have to be in the right time, in the right place. So uh, that's why this process might take uh, a little bit longer than the actual work to okay. be done. Okay. So um, uh, maybe then, who is? How many people take part in in this process on our side? Is it still the uh, uh, the team leader and the designer responsible for the final design, or is it someone who the specializes designer sometimes in DFM? Is, is not even involved in this process um, of of mechanical design. He is of course looking at the object at, as the at the final result, and he consults the um, the surfacing, the results, the, the the values that he wanted to be visible. But sometimes the designer is not involved in this process anymore. He is focused on another project. Another project. But it usually takes um, is it, uh, two is... or three people still. Okay. Uh, uh, is it because uh, this process is less of a design process and more of the negotiation slash technical production uh, process? There is still design, but... Uh, of course, it's different, difficult to understand for someone, but the design and the mechanical design is a bit different. Mm -hmm. Because design is more about the values, the, the more holistic approach, and the mechanical design is actually making this possible mm -hmm. um, within these values that were defined. Uh, of course, um, our designers are as well technical uh, people as well as mechanical designers have this artistic understanding of uh, of the sure. values that we that well, we deliver they need to be on the same page but yeah but these are um, still a, not a little different compet competences um, different um, skills skills so that uh, w sometimes we switch uh, the the, the the designer <laughs> okay. um, within the, the project so that his uh, skills are better suited for, for, for this, this particular stage. phase. Okay, um, so we have two people, it might take months as in two, three, or it might take way, way more depending on, for example, if you need to wait for lawyers to write yes, up contracts, etc. This, this, this 
this might take really a long time. Yes, um, I've got a uh, an example. Maybe I cannot speak of of the brands that we worked for, but I've got an example from both uh, perspectives. Mm -hmm. We uh, were able to deliver the mechanical, the conceptual design, and the mechanical design. And our client was able to manufacture this design in a time period of a half a year. Mm -hmm. Bef uh, so, so the from the start, beginning of working with yes, us to the moment where where the product was actually on the market. Okay, it was half a year. That seems uh, below the uh, the time scopes we were talking about. <laughs> yes, but I wanted to mention that that if you. If we have the vendors already set for manufacturing, because mm -hmm. it's really important, we've got a project manager that knows what's possible within this time period on the client side, mm -hmm. of course, because they are experienced in in the process, in the process, and in the in the manufacturing process, and in introducing the project into the market, because then it's a fast-paced. Uh, project okay. so that we delivered three concepts within a month then we've made some tweaks within two weeks because there they were just tweaks for the targeted conceptual mm -hmm. phase and then the magic happened because we were simultaneously working on mechanical design with their team okay and the biggest advantage for this project was that we were working on in different time zones so that we were waking up working on a mechanical design for several hours then sending the design to their designers their yeah. mechanical designers they were waking up because they were in Canada so this was non-stop non-stop yes, work that was sort of. that was non-stop work because of the fact that these time yeah. zones were uh, well aligned uh, well aligned so this was possible only with these within this is, with, within this, uh, this context so that's okay. why this project went so quick but still that's one side of the spectrum you said you have another example yes i had an i have an, another example and i have an example of taking the product from conceptual phase mm -hmm. up to the market for 9 years 9 years yes okay and why this happened? Because we still made the conceptual phase within one month. We've made some small changes within three weeks or so. Um, and then the magic didn't happen because okay. the project manager uh, changed in the company. There was no one to take this project um, and and continue it within this, uh, the, the, the structures of, of, our, of our client's company. So this project just stopped for several years because of the fact that people weren't able to communicate between them. And, and they just picked it up after a couple of years? Yes, and after a couple of years, there was one man that, that sourced that th there's a project open in their system and they would like to return to this project. And okay. after seven years of nothing... So communication, communication, communication. Yes. So, so and, and project management. And to be honest, the first project was more complicated <laughs> than the later one. Yeah, but still... Uh, it, uh, I would... I, I'm not sure if I would believe if after seven years someone contacted me and said, hey, remember that project we were working on? Let's finish it. I would be like, well, April 1st, what's going on? Yes, that was, uh, that was a story uh, that, you know, you, you could write a book about it. <laughs> but it is true. And uh, without uh, being, without hearing about this story, because I didn't work at this company when this design was... Uh, when the conceptual phase when was started, made, yeah. uh, but I was working within this company when this pr project finally uh, happened. So uh, 
this is a fun, funny story from this perspective. Yeah, but, I can imagine. But uh, from the perspective of, uh, of the design studio that your work is on hold for several years, mm. you do not expect it to, to, to be successful in the next year or so. But uh, these are extreme uh, examples extreme that I yeah, wanted sure. to, to cover. Because usually um, when we still have an average of introducing a project into the market, I know it's still something unbelievable, but it takes a little mm, around two years mm. from the idea to the market. Yeah, but there is still one last stage of the process we haven't mentioned before the product can hit the shelves and that's uh, supervising the production. So. Uh, sort of quality checking the first batch uh, of, of uh, products that, are, that come off the assembly line. Um, this is also uh, probably time consuming and requires a couple of people. So tell me maybe a bit about uh, this last step of our design process. Sure. Uh, as we are not manufacturers, uh, we do not have facility. Uh, facilities to make these projects uh, or to manufacture them, mm, we still see that the problem is within quality assurance. Because uh, once you set the manufacturing process, uh, once you set all the tooling uh, to be made by, by the vendor, mm, the problem is that uh, sometimes our client or the, the people that are involved in the project from our client's side are not able to judge if this product that is already assembled mm -hmm. and placed for verification for um, for final acceptance is okay or not. Okay. So that uh, we as designers know what we should expect from the project, from the product, what's the surface quality. Uh, what's the assembly quality? Um, is it squeaky or not? Mm. Is, does it work the way we want? Mm, we, we can make a procedure of testing, uh, of course, on the mechanical side as well as, uh, as electronics, because um, electronics is also important to work. <laughs> Uh, so that the, the final product uh, is uh, making value. Mm, so we know what to look for and how to tweak the process so that the final products are um, the quality our client needs yeah, and the and quality we want. And how, many, how much time can it take and how many people work on that? Um, I think that it's a constant process of, uh, of tweaking the, 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 the production if it happens. So once the production starts, um, we take uh, an engineer and a project manager usually, so two people, um, sometimes more, but it's not very usual, um, to visit the, the vendor, to visit the company that we are working with. Um, and y you can call it some kind of an audit. Mm. Like we just speak of, of the project, what are the uh, pros and cons of each, uh, of each step of assembly, um, how can we make it more efficient, what are the ideas for, for better uh, manufacturing, uh, and finally making the price uh, more affordable. Mm -hmm. mm, so I believe it's a process of, of days. Uh, because once the production is running, you can make some quick uh, changes in this process. But sometimes you need to, um, of course, I'm not saying that rebuild the tool that you are manufacturing with, but uh, spend more time uh, on a technological phase mm -hmm. on how to make this process better. Okay. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, more than days, it takes weeks, but it's not very common. Yeah, but it doesn't take months. So we no. have two, two people for days or weeks sort of auditing the uh, quality of the products that come off the uh, assembly line. True. Okay, Nikoi.
That's the whole of the process. Uh, I think we have clear how much work who uh, puts in uh, within each step. And uh, I think we can also have a very quick talk about uh, situations that you have witnessed or know that were witnessed in our company about how sometimes clients um, uh, make decisions that simply cost them money or cost them time and that could have been avoided by simply making a different decision. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, may, maybe just as a word of precaution, sort of, to people that are thinking about developing a new product or maybe when, when they last did, they have had some uh, budgeting problems and are might come to situations like this. Maybe this will help them making to make better decisions uh, the next time. Um, can you think about any situa situations like these? Um, there are some, <laughs> but um, I would like to make it more general, rather like uh, the particular situation that we had. Yeah, sure. I think that we should all um, understand that the design process is a process. It mm, needs to be an iterative one. So we shouldn't find savings of money, of time, um, by reducing the amount of uh, prototypes, for example. Okay. Because it's really not that expensive to make the third or even fourth prototype before being 100% sure that the tooling we are going to invest in is going to be okay. Mm, it's a good way to simulate. If you think that simulation, for example, an injection molding simulation that uh, costs around thousand or two thousand dollars per single piece is uh, expensive, I'm still saying that it's not. Because you... In comparison to the amount of money you will need to spend on the on, on final tooling, production. On yeah. final production, because you have to buy steel, you have to, or, or the manufacturer has to buy steel, has to mill it, so he, he needs to spend a lot of machine time for making this tool, and once he, make, uh, he made this, he's, he's made this tool, it's not that easy to change. Mm. There is a, a you know, well-known graph that the change at the beginning of the project is, has a, a very big impact, but a low price. Mm. But on the other hand, when the small change um, happens on the later stage of the, of the process, it costs a lot. more money or a yeah. lot. So make sure that your design is manufacturable. We can take care of it, of course. Mm -hmm. But of course, also make sure that the prototype that you have is satisfying for you. If in one way it's not, mm -hmm. we should think of it, m make one more revision. It takes just a week or so or to, to design, a few weeks to prototype. Mm -hmm. So a month of thinking of, uh, it, a, a month in this period of, of developing of, of, a, of a product is not a big amount of time. You can afford it. Mm. You need um, to be able to afford it. Yes, you, you sh or you should to be able to afford yeah. it. Um, because, of course, we can jump from the first prototype into the DFM process and manufacturing, but, you know, if we are not 100% sure, I think that something will fail. Mm. So this is a rule... The, the master rule number one, I okay. think. Okay. Um, the second thing is that in your budget and in your schedule, you have to not only think of the design phase, mm -hmm. but also you have to think of the manufacturing and marketing phase. Because it's 
really super easy to, to see the visual that you've got this beautiful render after after two months of cooperation mm -hmm. and you think that okay it's it's okay it's going to be on the market it's uh, a product that we will see on the shelves within next two months no <laughs> uh, we have to work on it together as well as the client as well as the design studio to make this uh, product possible and making this possible is only feasible when you take it into production so you have to reserve or, or preserve some time for manufacturing as well as marketing which can be a parallel process because of course when you want to sell something you have to tell about it earlier than the production begins yeah. because you don't want to risk a lot of money into production so that your product might be not needed it's usually an idea of few people but this idea has to be covered or bought mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by by many people uh, for the product to be successful so these factors are also important to cover to think of within the strategy of introducing a new product into okay. Okay. the market i think that these two rules like uh, the but the the time is the time is the main mm. reason to think of if you are going to be fast in delivering the product you have to be secure mm -hmm. that the manufacturing facilities that vendors that components that are going to be in this product are already sourced then you can be fast okay mm because you know the process you know the uh, the vendor possibilities you know that especially this time uh, the electronic components are available so that once you have uh, these three factors already secured you can jump into the design phase with certain constraints because these constraints might influence the creative process mm -hmm. of designing the product but if you want to be fast you have to be constrained, you have to be precise, and you have to be really um, uh, consequent in the time. So I think uh, uh, you could sum it up by if you want to deliver a product fast, you need to basically have experience in developing new products. You need to have Simple as that. <laughs> uh, a good workflow, you need to know what you're doing, you need to know how much time you will need. You need that experience and if you've never delivered a product to market before, that's uh, a crash course. That, that, will, that will not happen. You will either lose money or the product will not see the day of light. Um, In, or if, it will take a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of resources. <laughs> These three factors, you will finally get the product. But not uh, fast. But not fast. Yeah, and probably not this... This quality that you wish for. Yeah, yeah. Is, is there any uh, other situation or, or case or wrong decision making that comes to mind that you would like to mention? Uh, I, I didn't want to, to, to be so negative, like mm -hmm. bad decision making, but not making a decision is a bad thing. Okay. Like if what we ask our clients to focus on the particular list of questions that we have and we need this decision pretty fast so that we can work uh, on it. Sometimes it's uh, the mail is sent or the call is uh, made. We've got, we've got a call and after this call we've got three, four days or weeks even silence uh, or, or two weeks of silence. And that doesn't help with developing a product faster. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so uh, maybe maybe some kind of uh, um, agile feedback is a really good point to mention if we want to uh, work dynamically. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good practice to have uh, quick calls or quick emails and quick answers to these emails because these are small problems that can be solved within half an hour sometimes but sometimes it take it takes a week to to get the information okay. back so 
it's a good practice to treat us a design studio as a partner as a team member instead of an external company that is doing the job good yeah we are going to be good or as good as the communication as is. a team yeah so it, we, it basically all keeps coming back to communication like you have mentioned it at the i think at the beginning of this conversation and we've talked about it in a, in another episode um communication is basically the key to succeeding no yes. matter however the rest will work if you have bad communication it won't yes <laughs> this is something that we should learn as as people as team members yeah. and as um, as partners in business communication yeah. is the most important yeah okay so let's keep it as a positive uh, comment for the end uh, keep your communication uh, or swift and and uh, right sort of if you want to succeed in developing a new product um, I think that's it do you, do you think there's something to say for the last words um, I think that uh, people will finally want to know how much money that will it cost but we can cannot tell without any example yeah. and we didn't want to do this because we wanted to make it more general, sort of, to, to understand the process and the time so that the money is a, just a result yeah. of this time. Yeah, so if you want to know the budget for your project, simply contact us. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.